Hi guys, this is the second part of a video series about PFSense. In this part, we'll look at the hardware and network equipment to use with both a physical and a virtual machine PFSense setup. So let's get started. Hi guys and welcome to this, the second part in the series of videos on PFSense. So in the last video we talked a little bit about it, so now it's time to get it installed and get a PFSense router up and running so we can ditch that ISP router. And we're going to do this both on bare metal and in a KVM VM on Unraid. Now before we try and install any software, let's talk about hardware. And yes, we need to talk about hardware even if we are using a VM. Now, we can use pretty much any x86 computer to run PFSense, but we need at least two dedicated NICs to use for PFSense. And why two? Well, one is for your WAN and one is for your LAN. With the WAN obviously connecting to your internet connection, that's your VDSL modem, your cable modem, etc. And then the LAN connecting to all of your network devices. Now, yes, it is possible to use only one NIC for PFSense, but for that, we need to use VLANs and have a VLAN capable switch. Now, I will be showing you how to do that in a later video, as it can be useful if you can't add any extra NICs into the computer on which you're running PFSense. But really, it's far better and easier to use a NIC for each. So that's what we're gonna do for now. It's recommended that the network cards that we use for PFSense are Intel ones. Now, I'm not saying that other brands don't work, but you're much more likely to have problems and lower performance with other brands. You see, often the other brands that make network cards save money in the manufacturing process by not having so many dedicated chips on the card, and thus substituting that with the workload being offloaded in software. So make sure you choose Intel network cards in your PFSense box for the best compatibility and best performance. So if you don't have two built-in NICs that you can use, we should buy a PCIe add-in card. Now don't bother with a dual port card, get a quad port card, as we can do more with this, as you'll see later on. Now don't go out and buy a shiny new server grade quad port network card. Look at this on Amazon, they want £400 for this. New ones are crazy prices. Now go on to eBay and have a look. You'll find lots of used enterprise NICs out there and pay around £15. What's that? Around $20. So that's a bit of a difference. And don't just use the search term Intel quad NIC. Also try just quad NIC, as often the HP and Dell cards use the Intel chipsets. Okay, so that's our network card dealt with. So what else do we need? Well, we're going to need a network switch, and preferably a gigabit one. The one I'm using is an 8-port TP-Link TL-SG108PE smart switch with four power over Ethernet ports, which I find really useful. It's also a managed switch, which is great, so I can use VLANs on my network for doing things like putting Internet of Things devices on a separate subnet. But a managed switch isn't an essential requirement, but it's really nice to have. So if you can, use a managed switch with PFSense. If we're not using a managed switch, we can still separate out our Internet of Things devices into a different subnet without using VLANs. What you'd do is you'd just use one of the spare ports in the quad NIC for a separate subnet going to its own Wi-Fi access point. That way then, the Internet of Things devices would be separated on a physical network rather than a VLAN. All of this we'll be looking at later on. And don't worry if you're not sure all about VLANs and that kind of thing, because they're really easy. Right, so we know we need a network switch to plug into the LAN on our PFSense firewall but we're also going to need a Wi-Fi access point. Well, if we want to have Wi-Fi on our network, that is. And the one that I'm using is a Ubiquiti access point, the Unify APAC Lite. And this is an awesome access point that's powered by PoE, which is really great. And it actually comes with its own injector, so you don't actually need to have a PoE switch. And another great thing about this access point is you can have up to four separate Wi-Fi SSIDs from it and you can assign each of them to their own VLAN. So if you're looking for a new access point, I would really recommend these. Now, I hope I'm not really putting you off by telling you you need to buy all this new hardware. 
because we can actually repurpose some of the hardware that we already have. Now if you don't want to buy a new access point and a new switch, then you can use your current router to service both your switch and your Wi-Fi access point. You would just need to give the router an IP address on the same subnet as your PFSense box and make sure you disable the DHCP inside of it. And that's because PFSense will now be our DHCP server. So that's the equipment we need LAN side. But we also need to get internet into our PFSense box through the WAN. So we're going to need a modem. And depending on what type of broadband you have, you're going to need either a cable, VDSL or ADSL modem. And I live in the UK and have my internet with BT, so I use a VDSL modem myself. And if you live here in the UK as well, and you need a VDSL modem, you can get one really cheaply on eBay. You can buy an open reach VDSL modem for around 10 to 15 pounds. I used one for a few months and it worked really well, but then I decided I wanted something slightly better quality, so I upgraded to the Draytech Vigor 130 modem. And I'm sure some of you are wondering, can you use your existing ISP router as a modem? Well, yes you can. It's not ideal, but it is possible. But to be honest, I'd really try and avoid doing so if at all possible. But for those of you guys who have no choice but to do so, I will be talking about how to do this and use it as a modem for PFSense later on in the videos. So, that's all of the network equipment that we need to run our PFSense box. So now let's move on and talk about the other hardware that we need. I did say that PFSense will work on pretty much any x86 hardware, which it will, but it's best to keep some things in mind. If you're using an old computer and it's turned on all of the time, just how much power will it use? You may want to choose a machine that doesn't use much power. Why waste electricity? Here are some examples of a few low power CPUs, but obviously there are many more to choose from. And in my PFSense box, I have an old Celeron 847 CPU from way back in 2011. It works fine for my needs as a backup PFSense box, but doesn't support AESNI. Which brings me on to the next point, future-proofing your build. AESNI. This will be a requirement for future PFSense releases, but isn't an essential requirement now to run PFSense. But it's still useful for OpenVPN because having ASNI will mean your CPU doesn't have to do so much work. So to future-proof your PFSense box, pick a CPU which supports this if you can. Now for RAM, I wouldn't use any less than two gigs, and I wouldn't use any more than four. And of course, we're gonna need a hard drive to install PFSense onto. Now, an SSD is better, but only really is it makes less heat and uses less power than its mechanical counterpart. An SSD's faster speed isn't going to give your PFSense box any performance boost. Now you don't need a large hard drive to install PFSense onto, so if you're using an SSD just look for a really small one. I'm using an old 60 gig SSD in my physical PFSense box. So that's what to consider when building a physical PFSense box. So if we're going to build PFSense in a VM, what do we need to take into consideration there? Well, the main thing is that we have to pass through the Quad Intel NIC. And for this to happen, our server, it must support IOMMU. Now, if it doesn't, it really is a showstopper. We're not going to be able to make it work. But if you've got that functionality, then you should be good to go. The only other thing really to think about is does the host CPU support AESNI? Again, if it doesn't, then in the future, you're not going to be able to upgrade to the newer version of PFSense. So that's it really on hardware. Now it's time to collect up what you need, and then move on and install the software. So let's get on and do that next. But that's in the next part. But I have that video almost finished. So you'll see it here on Saturday. So please, if you want to know as soon as it's there, then set your YouTube bells ready for that. And I just want to say to all of my Patreons and all of the people who have supported me, a massive thank you. You guys make all of this possible and I really do appreciate it. And as always guys, if you like the video, then let me know by hitting that like button. And any questions that you have, please put it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer those. Anyway guys, it's time for me to go. And whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you next time.